time in there. Mm. That ain't on YouTube, I'm on Facebook. More than likely. Yeah, I really just did it just to see the comments. You might want to close that. You can share it, tell you pay. You can add to tag some people in it. One y'all or somebody like that. Okay. Tell me the truth. No, I ain't just ain't never right. White man, I want you to know the time. Huh? <clears throat> all right, we'll go ahead and get started. All right. This is Real Life School, University of Practical Knowledge. Started at 1 West 125th Street, Harlem, New York, under command in General Yana. You understand? If it's not of the UPK, it's not of the Lord, under command in General Yana. This is the Israelite School of UPK, Memphis, Tennessee camp. You understand? Um, one of the brothers he was bringing out, of course, you know, it's the Brotherhood class. So usually, brothers, we usually discuss a couple of things that we talk about before we come to class or even after class. Of course, in the city of Memphis, you understand, the city of Memphis is full of poverty just like every other city. It's full of oppression. It's full of adultery. It's full of homosexuality. It's full of everything that you can name because the Lord's people is here as well. You understand? That's why the UPK is needed in Memphis, Tennessee. Because without it, blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, who the Lord calls Israel, or Yasha Allah in the Hebrew, they would die. You understand? Uh, let me bring out a couple of basic information. Give me the, the uh, information about the, about the murders. Now, like every other city, of course, you know, we got murders everywhere. Right? But it's something that this city needs to know. Because if, cause if we didn't have... If we had brotherhood, we wouldn't have this issue. These are young black men, young black women, babies, you understand, and mothers dying every day all over the world. But in Memphis, Tennessee, the number has blew up like a balloon, you understand? It's, it's way beyond the usual. It's the old small little town down here. It's the old small little city. Don't nobody really just pay attention to. That's a lot of killing going on. It's a lot of murder. It's a lot of lies going on. What's the, what's the number on it? You got it? No sweat. I, I think I believe I wrote it down. If I ain't mistaken. Okay, in 2016, in Memphis, Tennessee, because we didn't have Brotherhood and we didn't have the UPK here, 288 murders in Memphis, Tennessee in 2016. What'd you say, I did number what? You said it tripled? What, what, what was the statement it made? Go ahead. Say it, uh, no, Speak loud for me. You said what? No, comparison. Right. It's just the, the, in today's time right now, how many months is this? Five months? Within five months of 2019, that number has drawn a comparison 
of 288 murders in Memphis, Tennessee. You understand? Because it wasn't no brotherhood. Because a brother didn't know the Bible. Because he didn't know what Christ was in, Christ instructed them to do. We got over 2,000 something churches. Go ahead. Yeah, um, 43 homicides so far this year. 43 homicides? Yeah, this time last year, it was only 29. It was 43 homicides within <clears throat> this year. And what, what else? 29. Around this time last year, this time last year it was 29 homicides. If today's time right now is 43. Five months within within a year, you already got young black men dying because brother because they ain't got brotherhood. You understand? Young black men that the Lord considers soldiers that one day will be holy priests. These men are dying on the street because there is no brotherhood in Memphis, Tennessee. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Memphis homicide rate was the third highest of the country's 50 largest states last year, according to FBI latest data. Uh -huh. In 2017, there were 181 homicides in Memphis, 28 per 100,000 people in the city, according to FBI Uniform Crime Report statistics released last month. So this is some federal information. From the government, you understand, and these this ain't just this just ain't gang violence. In Memphis, Tennessee, it, brothers just don't die because of gangs. Sisters ain't dying because of gangs. You 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 got brothers who who check each other. You understand, brothers down here in Memphis, Tennessee, will die because another brother said something to him. You understand, and he didn't like the he didn't like what he said. Because his mother, you understand, or his father may have raised him up in Memphis, Tennessee, and didn't teach him how to be a real man. Didn't teach him how to be a man of the Lord. Men of the Lord have skin like an alligator. You understand? Tough skin. They, they built to last forever. They don't get emotional about things. And if they do, you understand, they, they go back and fix it. In Memphis, Tennessee, young men don't get raised up by the Lord. So because of that, you got a federal information about brothers dying in this city. You understand? What else you got? You guys sit on that? So Memphis is what? It's third. It's the third. Memphis, Tennessee is the third most violent big city in the United States. Third. Out of 50 some states, Memphis, Tennessee, the city of Memphis is, is the third. That's got to be crazy, huh? And there's over 2,000 churches in Memphis. They're supposed to teach the truth. They're supposed to teach blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians about the Bible. What they doing with the money? What they doing with the time? Well, we, we drove down here to the library, you understand, because Memphis really is just one big hood. All I don't care if it's South Memphis, East Memphis, North Memphis, you understand? It's one big ghetto where all black men die. Where black men get oppressed every day. Young black men. The city full of young black men. But I'm not all this Like, if, 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 if it wasn't... Oh, drugs. Addicts. Yeah, you understand? If it wasn't for the Lord, I don't know what the hell would happen. This, this city would perish if it wasn't for the UPK. Now, one of the biggest issues we got amongst each other and as far as brotherhood, you understand? This, this ain't just in Memphis, it's everywhere. It's the fact that brothers like to sleep with other brothers' wives. They like to, like to toss other brothers' wives. You understand? A, a TA down here is toss action, where they take one sister and they share them amongst four or five brothers. And then after that, they throw her away. You understand? That's a TA down here in Memphis, Tennessee. Brothers take other brothers' wives because once these once this brother sleep with her, once one brother sleep with her, guess what? According to the Lord, that's her husband. So now everybody committing adultery. Ain't <laughs> that something like it? Everybody committing adultery. You know what I'm saying? Give me uh Leviticus chapter 18, verse 16. Come on, come. This this is what the Lord say that brothers, you understand, are not supposed to be doing. If they knew the Bible in Memphis, Tennessee. We wouldn't even have the phrase T.A. 
It wouldn't exist amongst Israel. Go ahead. The book of Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 16. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. Of uh, who? Thy brother's wife. Thy brother's wife, man. You ain't supposed to look at, you ain't supposed to uncover her. You ain't supposed to make her your wife. You ain't supposed to lay down with her. You ain't really ain't supposed to be looking at her. That ain't your property. That's your brother's property, man. You understand? But the fact of the matter is, we ain't been taught right. We ain't had the spirit of the Lord on us. We ain't seen real priests and prophets, you understand? But you got them here today. You got blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indian men who are willing to die and kill if necessary for brothers in Memphis, Tennessee. You understand? Without the Lord, without the UPK, this city would be nothing. It would perish overnight. Thank the Most High for the UPK, you understand? Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Uh-huh. Now, therefore, hearken. The, now, listen, Israel. The Lord just spoke to us from the old to the new until today. The Lord been telling us to listen forever. The Lord been telling us to do what the hell he say every goddamn day. But because we ain't got no guidance, because we want to accept being nothing, because we want to accept being thugs and gangbangers and whores, you understand? We live in a society where we less than nothing. We third in the nation of violence, of being the most violent city. When this goddamn city ain't even that big, you understand? You can literally drive from one, one place to another within 30 minutes. So what's going on here? What's going on is blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians are having children. And they ain't just aborting them, you understand, through abortion. They aborting them through the so-called white man society. His system. You understand how he wants things to be. That's what they're doing. Because if they're not giving them up to the Lord, then they got to be giving them up to the white man. Was you giving up to him, you, you giving up to death. Everything outside the Bible is fitted for Esau's kingdom. When the Lord considers us to be something else, the Lord is saying, do what? Therefore, hard king. He's saying, listen, go ahead. O Israel. O Israel, Yashala in the Hebrew. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians down in Memphis, Tennessee. The Lord is saying, listen. O Israel, O holy name Israel, Yashala. Go ahead. Unto the statutes and unto the judgments. So we're supposed to be listening to the statutes and the judgments. These laws, statutes, and commandments. If we knew Leviticus chapter 18, verse 16, so many women would not abort babies. So many women would not leave their husbands. So many women would, would live with their husband, you understand, and be good mothers and learn to teach their daughters how to be good daughters. The only way you can do that is by serving the Lord. Anything outside of that is nothing. Go ahead. Which I teach you. The Lord teaching us, you understand? The Lord gave the law to Moses and, and Aaron, you understand, has been passed all the way down to commanding General Yohanna. To every black, Hispanic, and Native American Indian man in UPK who go out and teach on the street every goddamn Saturday, you understand? The same law, statutes, and commandments the Lord gave then, he gave it to us today. For you to listen, Israel, to know that you cannot sleep with your brother, that you cannot sleep with your sister, that you cannot sleep with your brother's wife. That you cannot, sis, that you cannot sleep with a man outside of your husband. You understand? Go ahead. Or to do them. You gonna say what? To do what? To do them. So he's going to teach it, and then we're supposed to do them. These words in this Bible ain't just for no goddamn picture or, or just to look at. These words in the Bible is for actions, man. The Lord requires action more than he requires your words. You understand? Because without it, ain't nothing, ain't nothing going to move. You understand? Go ahead. That ye may live. That you may what? Live. 288, 288, 288 blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians died in 2016. What's the current number now? Did you get the current number for today's time? And you said comparison. You know why they say comparison? There's a reason why I say it. They're saying comparison because it's still growing. You understand? Five months within this, within a year, it's still growing. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans still dying. That number's still growing. 
If we was to if we was to learn them, you understand, and do them, we wouldn't have this issue down here. Brothers, brothers will be in my eyes. Brothers, when I see brothers, when I hear them talking, I see I see glorious things. You understand? I see life in them. That's how you're supposed to love your brother. You ain't supposed to look at your brother as some evil thing. Same thing with your sister. Just because she got a bigger butt than you, you understand, or her body shaped a certain way, you ain't supposed to hate that sister. It's, that's a big epidemic down here. Young sisters killing each other, fighting each other in the bathroom because one girl looked prettier than the other. When the Lord called all his daughters of Zion pretty, you understand, and it ain't really about your beauty. It's about what, what the Lord requires of you and how you are. That's what makes you beautiful in the sight of the Lord. You understand? You could be the most prettiest woman in the world, but if you're rotten in the inside, can't nobody do nothing with you. Hell, you can't even do nothing with you. You understand? The Lord don't give a damn about how you look. The Lord requires your actions. He requires what you're supposed to do. That's how he consider you beautiful. You understand? Go ahead. And go in and possess the land with the which the Lord God your father giving you. What verse you at two? Keep going. Verse two. Uh -huh. He shall not add unto the word which I command. Stop you. right there. You know who adding unto the word in today's time? Them goddamn Christian pastors that got over two over two thousand churches in Memphis, Tennessee, where brothers still dying. They add to the word. They telling brothers and sisters they can eat pork. They telling brothers and sisters they can eat shrimp, crab, and lobster. They telling them, they telling them, just bring, bring yourself to the church. You understand, and, and and just come, come as you are. But goddamn, if I come, if I come as I am, I should leave a different way. If it's of the Lord, they adding to the word. Hell, if they wasn't adding to the word, you wouldn't see me on this video. You wouldn't see UPK running across the street. You wouldn't see no, you wouldn't see no black, Hispanic, and Native American Indian dying in Memphis if they were doing what they're supposed to do. Because when brothers and sisters, when brothers and sisters serving the Lord, ain't no destruction, ain't no death. It ain't nothing but life. That's what the scriptures say, right? The, the Christian pastor ain't teaching the laws. He telling them the law is done away with. So is he is he doing what the Lord say do? No. And that's why Israel dying. That's why Israel number one in AIDS, STZ, STDs. You understand? Because they don't want to do what the Lord say do. They got an issue with serving the Most High. You understand? Because the Christian pastor, your grandma, your auntie, your mammy, whoever you want to call, those people ain't bringing you to the Lord. They ain't going to try and turn you away. You understand? That ain't brotherhood. That ain't sisterhood. Go ahead, Doc. Neither shall ye diminish out from it. Now, the word of the Lord, the law, statutes, and commandments is the word of the Lord. Guess what? The Christian pastor... And everybody else that ain't in this one body, they diminish that word. They take away from that word. You understand? When the Lord say, don't do it. What's so goddamn hard about doing what the Lord say do? You think you're better than the most high? That's what it is. You understand? I had a conversation with a sister the other day. And we was talking about, so like I had to bring it up. We was talking about equality. You understand? We was talking about equality. And the sister said... That everybody's equal. Now you show me a society or a nation or a world or whatever the hell word you want to use that's equal. Even this goddamn table is not equal to another table. It's some unlevel things there. You understand? It's some rumps and bumps inside the table. The goddamn grass is not equal. Shrimp is not equal. You understand? Birds are not equal. Nothing is equal on the earth. At all. So why is she saying this? I'll tell you why she's saying it. Because she don't have sisterhood. Because if she, had, if she had sisterhood, she would know the importance of equality amongst her nation. She would know the, the importance that there is no equality on the earth. So therefore, I got to stick with my people. I got to fight for what's right for my people. Because my people die. Only a blind person would say that it's equality on the earth. Only a person that didn't love their brother, you understand, would say that. And even through the conversation, I searched it out and found out that she hates black people. And the reason I know she hates black people is because every time black people talk about black people, they always bring up another race. 
that proves that you hate your race. That proves that you hate your nation. Anytime you got to bring a whole other nation that ain't dealing or, 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 or being affected the same way that you've been affected, that proves that you hate your nation, that you despise some things about your nation. You don't want to be around them. First thing a black man do when he get money, you understand, he want to show everybody he got money. He want to be better than his brother instead of taking his money and putting it with his brother so one day everybody will be good. Don't give a damn how much money you got. You understand, if, if, if your brother's suffering, God damn it, you, you, a, you, you a so-called African-American, right? So it's just going to be one so-called African-American? What you going to do when all the other brothers die? What you going to do when all of them get poor? You going to go to the white man? Your race will, will soon to not exist anymore. There is no equality amongst us. The Lord never considered it. Drop down to verse 5 for me. Come on, come on. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes. Stop right there. The Lord said, behold. Behold, Israel. Like, damn. Like, look. I done taught you statutes and what? And judgments. And judgments and what? Even as the Lord, my God, commanded me. Uh-huh. Keep reading. That ye should do so in the land where ye go to possess it. Now, the land that we went to possess it and the land of today, we are still in slavery. Thus said the Lord, we are still supposed to do, so like it, to teach and to do these laws, statutes, and commandments. Wherever we go, wherever we live, wherever we roam, wherever we spend time, we're supposed to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments. Keep reading. Verse 6, keep therefore and do them. Uh-huh, keep therefore and do them. Go ahead. For this is your wisdom. This, this your what? Wisdom. So what's your wisdom? If you if you so goddamn wise, Christian pastor, or brother at, at your slavery, or game banker, whatever the hell you want to call yourself, if you so wise, then why are you not keeping the law, statute, and commandment? Because the Lord say to be wise is to keep his law, statute, and commandment. What's more, what's just is the law, statute, and commandment. What's good, what keeps you saying that you good, what keeps you saying, okay, well, this is right, is the law, statutes, and commandments. It's the Bible, which is the Lord. Without it, you are not good. You cannot make a sound decision on nothing without the law, statute, and commandment. What keep you from killing another brother is the law of statute and commandment. What keep you from not having sex, you understand, with your brother's wife is the law of statute and commandment. And guess what? In doing so, it keep you from getting STDs. It keep you from getting AIDS. It keep you from having a baby that's unwanted. Ain't nothing wrong with a brother and sister not wanting no children. You understand? But what's wrong is having the children, you understand, without taking the responsibility behind it. Without taking the true responsibility behind him, which is raising that child up within the Lord. You understand? But down here in Memphis, shit, they just popping out babies. Uh, 12, 13, 14, 16 years old, they just dropping babies off. They happy to have them. They happy to destroy another life that the Lord had put in the earth. Now, where do you think they got this from? They got it from their mother. They got it from their father. They got it from goddamn Jesse Jackson. They got it from Martin Luther King. They got it from, what's that, what's that pastor's name? The cussing pastor. What's his name? That is Matthew. See, I'm going to make him mad. I'm going to find every Christian pastor's name, and I'm going to say it on YouTube and Facebook, and you can come see me if you want to. I'm going to call out every gang banger and every member. You understand? You know where to find me. There ain't no sweat. You understand? Just come get down with the Lord. That's it. Go ahead, Doc. And your understanding. Uh, you know, so your wisdom and your understanding come from what? The law, statutes, and commandments. That's, that's brotherhood. That's sisterhood in a nutshell. Brotherhood and sisterhood in a nutshell is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. We're going to go into a couple of things of how brothers and sisters can keep, keep brotherhood amongst each other and not have a comparison of 288 brothers and sisters dying in Memphis, Tennessee. And not being third in a goddamn nation where a city is small and it's supposed to be love down here. It's supposed to be about peace. The white, let the white man keep continuing to tell you lies about this city. This city is destroyed, man. This is another hellhole where blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians live. Go ahead, Doc. What, what scripture you at? It's like I'm in uh, verse 6. Go ahead. 
in the sight of the nations. In the sight of the nations. These are the nations the Lord don't give a damn about them. But you try to impress them down here in this city. Like they mean something. You try to hold on to them and say that you're equal to, to them when they shoot you in the goddamn back. When they slam you on the ground while you're pregnant. And once, once upon a time, they fed, fed your children to alligators, man. And once upon a time, they skinned your back and made coats, which they sell them on eBay right now. Go look it up. This ain't some stuff I'm making up. You understand? Go ahead, Doc. Salaki. We shall hear all these statues and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So, the gist of everything is that our laws, statutes, and commandments was going to make us amongst every other nation. They was going to look at us and be like, these people are glorious. These people are amazing. Memphis, Memphis Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indian men, the, the other nations to look at them and be like, God damn it, they, they too beautiful to look at. I might need to put some shades or something on. You understand? They should be afraid in a in a presence like like amazement. Like they should look at them like they should look at us like we stars in heaven. That's what I want for my brothers and sisters. I want when they walk down the street or when they even thought of by another nation, where people be like, damn, I can't even think about them. I ain't worthy enough to be like them. They God is amazing. And it all comes from keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. I say it every goddamn class. It's simple. In order to be perfect is to keep the law. It's in the Bible. Those who tell you, that, oh, I know, the Christian pastor tell you that. He tell you you can't be perfect. He say the laws, you can't keep the laws at all. That's what he say. And he don't even know the goddamn Bible. He didn't even know Paul was a Benjamite. Go ahead, Doc. Where you at? Verse 7. Uh-huh. <clears throat> For what nation is there so great? Who have God so not unto them uh -huh. as the Lord our God in all things that we call upon him for? Uh -huh. And what nation is there so great that have statues and judgments so righteous? Stop right there. So the, the other nations are going to look at us and they're going to see brotherhood. They're going to see how we was working together and sisters how they was working together. They're going to be like, God damn, how they doing that? Like, where do you get this formula from? How do you, how do you make this thing work? How do you able to get things working right? In UPK, we got a ranking order system. This ranking order system that's been put down since 1969 under command of Jeremiah, you understand, which is established by the Lord. Never forget that. This ranking order that the Lord put down, we able to move mountains. We able to climb hills, man. We're able to, to, to take down all the fears and things that, that's in this society and become great because we keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And because of that, everybody outside of this nation, everybody outside of this school look at us and they be like, damn, them brothers, they hardcore. They sisters in line. Like, they, they amazing because we, we know the Bible because we keep the laws, man. You understand? Go ahead. So like you say, you come on, okay. As all this law which I set before you this day, uh -huh. only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. Now, Israel went through all things, you understand? Just like in today's time. What makes people forget that the so-called white man is the devil and that he is our enemy and every other nation outside of Israel is our enemy. And that the Lord is our only power is the fact that we forgot. We forget because we're not keeping the law, statute, and commandment. If we was keeping the law, statute, and commandment, we wouldn't look at everybody else's brothers and sisters. We would look at each other before we look at everybody else. Israel is amazing. Their mindset is just, just, it amazes me every day. A brother can be in the hood in Memphis, Tennessee. You understand? Off, off Inglewood, right? right? Them same two brothers can, can live there for years, man, and have beef with each other. But let a goddamn cracker come in there. You know what they're going to do? They're going to befriend him. 
they gonna let this little so-called white boy grow up in the hood, and he gonna be, they gonna be like, oh man, that's my partner. Uh, we cool. When the other brother grew up in this in the same goddamn street, the same neighborhood, and they hate each other. If we was keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, them two brothers love each other, and they run that goddamn devil out of there. They'll run them out. I done seen situations where sisters, you understand, get beat. Get beat by a so-called white man. And brothers just filming. They filming it. And I done seen situations where a goddamn devil is getting beat by another devil. And you got brothers and sisters, a swarm of brothers and sisters going to help them. Our sisters get, our 15, 20 year old sisters get beat down in the street and brothers are just feminine. Like, ah. Uh, well, the world star, you understand? South Memphis, this is South Memphis Live, nigga, you know what I mean? World star. That's your sister, man. They don't supposed to be fighting each other. Like, you supposed to get in there and be like, hey, sister, like, that ain't how y'all do that. Hold on one second. Hey, look, now we ain't gonna do that, you understand? The Lord don't want you like that, you know what I mean? Y'all yeah, supposed to look at them devils like, well, shit, that's just two dogs fighting. That's just two animals. They, they normally do that anyway. What the hell am I looking at? I just seen a video the other day with some so-called white girl, you understand, was, was pretty much trotting on both, both hands and feet. She got a video where she teaching people how to... It's a lot of Teaching people how to jump over a goddamn pole like a horse, man. They, they, they show you their natural state, but because we don't love each other and we love them, we accept it. We accept their life into ours, and we're supposed to accept the Lord's life. We're supposed to accept what the Most High wants us to accept. What verse you at, Doc? Verse 9, sir. Go ahead. At least they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. Uh-huh. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. That's what we're supposed to be doing. If Memphis, Tennessee knew the scripture right here, if they knew they was Israel, brothers wouldn't be shooting each other. Brothers wouldn't be dying, man. Sisters wouldn't be getting holed out. They wouldn't get played, as they would say. When none of those things happen if we, if, if, if we serve the Lord, our, our blueprint, our way of life, our everyday decisions is in the Bible. All we gotta do is open the damn book and read it. Or oh, Salah, so like, don't do that. Don't just open it up and read it. I don't wanna create no more pastors. You understand? This is what you should do. You should go to the men of the Lord. And the men of the Lord is in the UPK. You, you got a safe zone. You got a safe haven in Memphis, Tennessee now. You got a place where a brother don't give a damn where you came from. He gonna come pick you up. If you ain't got no ride, he gonna come pick you up and he gonna feed you. You understand? He gonna show you all the love that you ever desired in your entire life. Because that's what Brothers Memphis missing in Memphis, Tennessee. Trust me, I know. When Brothers when brothers see this, this glorious brotherhood, they ain't got no choice but to get down. Because it's, it's horrible here. It's disgusting here. It makes you, it, you walk down the street in Memphis, Tennessee, it makes you want to vomit, man. To see your brothers and sisters oppressed, it makes you feel to the point where you want to cry. Even the strongest man would cry walking up and down these streets, man. What is it, walking in Memphis? They did the song? It is horrible down here. Make no mistake. No, make, don't let the white man fool you. Make no mistake about it. It's horrible here. It's horrible because the Lord want to wake Israel up. If he, if he kept it beautiful and good, God damn it, you would never come to him. Hell, you don't want to come to him now and it's destroyed. Diapers all in the middle of the street. Sewage water everywhere. You understand? You can't, can't come out your house because it smells like booty everywhere. It smells like a jailhouse. What you say about the, 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 uh, the jail system? What's going on in the jail system? Overcrowded. At, at, at 201 Poplar, it is overcrowded. How you be overcrowded in the jail? When you're supposed to be getting what? You're supposed to be getting fixed. You go to jail, get penalized, you're supposed to come out fixed, rehabilitated. They can't even sleep in a bed in jail. They, they got brothers, they got brothers in the correctional facility, 201 Popular, that's sleeping in the processing room. Uh, news Channel 5, t tell them about that. You understand? Tell them about the brothers that's getting sick and dying in prison, in, 201, in jail. That's a jail. 
It's a county jail. That's a jailhouse. They ain't even a prison. So I just let alone tell you about the Pentaform. And I know the Pentaform is destroyed. I didn't been up there. Brothers ain't. Brothers is just learning how to be better crooks, yeah. Brothers is just learning how to be better thieves than death. That's, that lets you know the white man don't give a damn about you. That lets you know there ain't no equality for the sister out there if she ever sees this video. Ain't no goddamn equality because the entire uniform is full of niggas. 201 is full of niggas. There's only a few, a handful of white people in, in 201. There's only a handful of them at, at the fourth flow. You understand? A handful of them, and the ones, and the so-called white people that's going, they getting out. They got money to bail out. The, in, t in today's society down here in Memphis, Tennessee, a, a young black juvenile, what they do is they send them through the system. And if his parents don't come up there when he's supposed to go to court that day, guess what happened? They taking his tail to jail. If ain't nobody signing no paper saying that they authorized for him, they giving him the max. If ain't nobody standing up for him and saying, hey, I, I, I got him, you know what I'm saying, he a good child, this and that, or he made some mistakes. If ain't nobody saying that, he get lost in the system and he get put in all different type of places all over Tennessee. And all he end up doing is coming back to the hood and saying, man, yeah, you know, I was locked down for this and that, man, you know what I'm saying? He go brag on it because he think that's, that's the only hope he got. All he got now is what? Shit, what, what, what uh, Tony Montana say? My balls and my words. So he like, shit, I'm going to let my nuts hang. You know what I'm saying? I went I went down to the Pentagon. I did like 15, such and such. You got brothers bragging on the fact, in Memphis, Tennessee, you got brothers bragging on the fact that they went to another prison besides the Pentagon. They call the Pentagon a baby prison. When brothers die there, brothers get killed there. You got brothers bragging. They're like, oh, man, you know what I'm saying? Man, I went to the Pentagon about, man, I was down there about three months, man. Mm -hmm. Nigga, that ain't nothing to be excited about. You just lost three years, three months of your life to a system that don't give a damn about you. And when you come out, you can't even get a job. You know how many unemployed black men is in Memphis? They unemployed, ain't got no education because in Memphis, it's, it's what, uh, what's it called? No student left behind yet. So that lets you know the white man don't give a damn about you. So if you didn't have a brother, guess what's going to happen? You're going to fall short anyway. You're going to end up dying. You understand? You're going to get caught up in the system because here, people don't care. The only people that's going to care about you is your brother and your sister, man. You understand? It's another big issue in, down here in Memphis, Tennessee is homosexuality. If we knew the Bible, if we knew, if we knew that the Lord loved us and wanted us to be great, then we would know that the Lord never never intended for us to sleep with each other, to sleep with the same sex. Give me uh, Leviticus chapter 18, verse uh, 22. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. You know how many strong black men in Memphis, Tennessee are homosexuals? There's brothers down here, man, that look like they should be playing. It's like I don't promote the NFL or nothing like that. But his brothers look like they should be playing in the NFL. They should be playing for the NBA. And they are straight homosexuals. Flaming homosexuals. They come from the hood. His brothers that gang bang, straight homosexuals. You know where they come from. They come from living in a society of a nation that don't serve God. They come from living in a society where the white man is the devil and believing that he's special. That's why brothers and sisters act the way they do down here. That's why brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters act the way they do because they won't do what the Lord say do. The Lord say have brotherhood and sisterhood. The Lord say be strong. Give me uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, chapter 6, verse 9. You understand? The Lord say that a black man, Hispanic and Native American Indian man is supposed to be strong. If we were strong down here in Memphis, Tennessee, I'm going to keep saying it over and over and over. We wouldn't have the murder rate that we have. We wouldn't be third in the nation of being the most violent city, man. You got it up? Uh -huh. Go ahead. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 9. Uh -huh. Know ye not the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Uh -huh. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Go ahead. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, uh -huh. nor adulterers, uh -huh. Nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Now, now stop for the time. I'm gonna break it down in, in Memphis terms. Go ahead. Know ye not 
that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom. Stop right there. To be unrighteous is not to keep the law of statutes and commandments. Because what's right and just is the law of statutes and commandments. And in Memphis, Tennessee, you have brothers who lie, who steal, who kill, who do everything. Despite of the Lord saying don't do it, they do it anyway. You will find the most unrighteous men in Memphis, Tennessee. Go ahead. That they should not inherit the kingdom of God. You, you ain't going to inherit the kingdom of God. I don't give a damn how much money you're giving that Christian pastor. Those two over 2,000 churches that spread across Memphis, Tennessee. I don't give a damn how much money you're giving them. You ain't going to get the kingdom of heaven. You can't buy your way into the kingdom of heaven. You can't give money to the Christian pastor and think it's going to be okay and go out there and sell dope to your brother. Hell, sell it to the pastor. It, it, down here, the pastor is getting high. You understand? He letting drugs go through his church. So like you. Go ahead. Be not deceived. Don't be deceived by this society and, and, and the goddamn uh, Riverside and the carnivals in Bill Street. And, and what's some more other places that got down here? Uh, 51, what is it, 51 something? What's the name of that, that um, the damn, uh, what you call them things, man? What's the name of the, uh, it ain't a party place. Hell, you can tell I don't go to the club. What's the name of the club? It's like, <laughs> what is it? 152, I ain't been in places a long time. So like, they let, you know they let 15 year olds in there? They let 15 year olds in there. Don't you know down here you can buy liquor at a young age? You can go on a liquor store. My little brother, so like, yeah. my little brother, man, you understand? He had a beard. I can't really grow no beard, so like, yeah. That brother used to get all the liquor for us at a young age. And, and they, they do not care. They don't care down here. Long as you got their paper, down here is about money. That's what makes brothers unrighteous. Brothers could be in the same gang and, and kill each other down here. They don't give a damn. There ain't no code of honor down here. It's money because the so-called white man has perceived to, in their eyes that that's, that's the way of life. When the way of life is to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. The way of life is to be wise and understanding is the law, statutes, and commandments. Go ahead, though, Neither fornicators. Neither fornicators. You understand? Unlawful sex. We just talked about brothers T.A. and sisters. You understand? Toss action, making her a whore. Now, that sister sleep with one man, and that's her husband. Now she got six more. Seven more. That's the number will probably keep growing. Turning these young sisters out, and then these young girls, you understand, having babies. Now, what kind of mother they going to be? You know, that's unbrotherly to sleep with a sister after she done slept with another man. You destroying their sister. You don't give a damn about her. You don't care not one bit about her. If you, if you, if you know she's sleeping with another man, then you go right up in her. You don't care about her. You don't care about him. And you damn sure don't care about yourself. You understand? Because if you did, you wouldn't do it. And the main reason you should not do it is because of the Lord's sake don't do it. If, if that's the one who created you. You hear brothers say all the time, I created him, I created this. Well, God damn it, follow what your creator say do. Follow what the power say do. If you're going to claim that claim that to be your power and your credit, then do what he say do, man. Go ahead. No idolaters. You brothers walking around here with this goddamn Christian cross, with these unks around your neck. And, don't, and the sad part is the brothers in Memphis, they walk around with the unks, and they don't even know nothing about Egyptology. They just... They just following the trend. They just like, oh, well, it's cool to walk around with this. Like, well, okay, well, like, where you learning from? Oh, man, you know, man, I just, man, I just like the way it look on it. So you like a vagina and a rod around your neck. You like a piece of wood around your neck. That means something to you. That's special. Now you special. You solid in that. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, brother. Have, have some more, have some respect about yourself. Have some dignity about yourself. Be, be a man. You understand? Being a man is, is serving the Lord. Go ahead. No adulterers. Uh huh. No effeminate. No effeminate. You know what effeminate means, right? These goddamn skinny jeans, man. These skinny jeans. Brothers, bro, and then brothers turn around and sag skinny jeans, man. You understand? How you, how you, it's like, how you be tough, you know what I'm saying? How you be tough? How you run for the police? You got skinny jeans on. Come on now. 
It's a lot. I gotta bring this out. I used to, I used to be in that double. You know what I'm saying? Uh, police department in Memphis and in Mississippi. You know how many brothers we didn't caught just because they couldn't put their goddamn pants up. You understand? I'm not bragging on that. I'm just saying like we supposed to be special amongst the Lord. Even even to say that to not be special amongst the Lord. We we call ourselves special, but then we walk around like we ain't nothing. Don't be feminine, man. Don't 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 buy down to your woman. Don't walk around like you ain't got no dignity at all. Like our, our culture in the Bible is glorious. When people see the UPK, they say, man, these brothers are strong. They don't be like, they might be like, oh man, I don't know what's up with them niggas, but in their mind, they be like, well, I ain't gonna fuck with them niggas. I ain't gonna mess with them. Them brothers right there, they, they it's something about them. It might be a little crazy. I always hear, man, I like y'all, man. I like the way y'all move. We ain't effeminate in here. What we gonna teach you down here in Memphis, Tennessee, how not to be effeminate? Go ahead. No abuses of themselves with mankind. Now, I, this is just simple. I don't know what Christian pastor is lying to you and telling you that you can abuse yourself with mankind, that you can have, it's a lot, that you can have sex with another man, you a man. There's some gay, some gay churches here, right? Next time we got to bring the gay churches out. Bring the name out. I want their names. We'll start bringing the names of people, you understand, who, who's, who's destroying Israel in Memphis. We'll start bringing the names out because, God damn it, they ain't doing nothing. What are they doing for the city? The city is destroyed, man. Go ahead. Already? Damn. Most I ain't cry. Give me uh. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. The book of Leviticus. Go ahead. The book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Now, ain't nothing wrong with a brother... Coming to another brother and being like, man, you was wrong for that. Like, like ain't nothing wrong with tell him, like, hey, look, man, the Lord, like, that ain't how we do it. That ain't how we supposed to treat each other. Like, you, you shouldn't have did that. I, I, like, don't do that, man. It's stupid. That's wrong for you to do that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Like, if you don't do that, you hate your brother. You, you covering this. Like, it's brothers down here where they know another brother finna go steal something. Well, ain't no way finna, like, his brothers be like, man, I'm gonna go hit that man's wife. I'm gonna take his wife. I'm gonna show us something. He ain't hitting it right. His brothers just do that. That's wrong, God. That's wrong to do that. That's wrong to, to be that way, you understand, to your brother, man, and allow those things to go on. You're supposed to say something. You're supposed to be like, man, look, man, I don't think that's right, man. Like, you know, such and such, man, they've been together for like 15 years. Not like, oh, shit, they've been together 15 years. I'm gonna make up, I'm gonna make the next hour of her life great. That's what brothers say. Damn, he would be like, man, ain't nobody studying that nigga, man. And that be his homeboy. The Lord say that's wrong, man. You hate him. And you know what else you hate? You hate the God that you always talking about. You hate the God that you call on when you down in 201 sleeping in the processing room. You hate the God that you call on when you're in the pinnacle and you say, man, I ain't gonna do it no more. You hate that God that just, that's giving you a chance, an opportunity to change your goddamn life. You hate him. You hate everybody if you do that, if you allow those things to go on. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 24. You understand? It's a purpose why. It's a reason why the UPK is here. It's a reason why we come to Memphis, Tennessee. You understand? It's a reason why we need it. Go ahead, Doc. You got it? Ecclesiastes cuss. Chapter 4, verse 24. Ecclesiastes cuts chapter 4, verse 24. See, y'all done had them little fake, well, I ain't gonna even call them Israelite. Y'all done had them cats come down here and try to try to give a watered-down version of what the Lord has set up years ago. And because of that, even though they still been down here, the death rate has still been high. Even though they still been down, you have men who done went and found some portion of the truth and then all you hear is, man, I don't even know about that, man. I don't know if I'm going to get down with that, man. It's like, what happened? Oh, man, I was with this group, man, and they took my money. Well, they told me I couldn't be in the school because I ain't had no job. 
or they come to my neighborhood and call the cops on me. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious. It's a brother. It's the brothers that got locked up down here in Memphis, Tennessee, right in front of their school. They called the cops on them. You understand? And 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 sent them to jail. And half of them catch work cops. Go ahead, Doc. The Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter four, verse twenty-four. Uh huh. For by speech wisdom shall be known. Uh huh. And learning by the word of the tongue. Uh huh. And no wise speak against the truth. Uh huh. But be a banished of the error of thine ignorance. Right. Now, in, in, in Memphis, Tennessee, we are ignorant to the faith of the Lord. We're ignorant to the fact that our wisdom and our understanding come from the Bible. Go ahead. What, what you got? No, I don't want to say that word. Though. Don't swear. Go ahead. Be abashed uh -huh. of the error of thine ignorance. Somebody, somebody pull a definition of that for me. Somebody pull a definition of that for me. You understand? Like the issue here is, is the fact that when we learned that, that it was a God, we didn't learn it from the people that the Lord had set up to learn it from. Go ahead. What's the definition of a man? Come with God. A man, it's in the Webster's Learning what's the online dictionary. It says, made to feel uncomfortable disconcerted or embarrassed by something that has happened or been done or said. You understand? So you're not supposed to feel embarrassed about keeping the law, statute, and commandment. You're not supposed to feel embarrassed about rocking fringes. You understand? The ribbon of blue. Or rocking the da wada. You're not supposed to you're not supposed to feel goofy or feel like or oh, I don't know and hide. You're supposed to let that light shine. You supposed to you're supposed to look in the in the in the eyes of the Lord as being glorious. The reason, brother, is because that's what we do in this school. We we are this scripture right here. We are Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse twenty-four in the UPK. We ain't. We are not afraid. We come straight, bold in the truth, and show brothers and sisters how to live their life and change it, and become great. You understand? Give me verse twenty-eight. Verse twenty-eight. Strive for the truth until death. But do what? Strive for the truth unto death. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And the truth of the matter is we're supposed to have brotherhood amongst each other every day. Every hour, every minute. And in UPK, that's what we do. A brother can come all the way from, from Philadelphia, you understand, and stay here forever. And not have to worry about a goddamn thing because of brotherhood. He can come live his life as great as it was in Philadelphia. And live it here and not have no issues at all. And have men that were willing to die for him if necessary. With men who were will, willing to feed him if necessary. That's the UPK. See, the UPK is in the scriptures. The UPK is, is the entire scripture because we live by the scriptures. Because we do what the Lord say do. Brothers and sisters be like, man, I don't see the UPK. The UPK is the Bible, nigga. UPK is the truth. Being the truth is the Bible. It ain't some some fathom thing where like, oh man, I learned the truth yesterday. The truth been here since before yesterday. UPK been here since forever. This is what the Lord established. And the way you know it is by the works. Not by just somebody saying something. See here, actions always present themselves as being the truth. Brotherhood and sisterhood, two things that Christ always talked about. Because without it, we'll die. Look at the race in Memphis. Look at our society in Memphis. Look at our young men. I drove, driving up here, I seen a young baby standing outside dancing with his pamper on. With no shoes, no shirt, nothing. His damn mama was sitting in the car dancing too. You understand? Down here, what, what's the word? <laughs> Salakia. Trifling? Right? Tripe life. That's where we live down here because we ain't got the Bible, man. We ain't got the Lord. We had the Lord, we wouldn't do these things. We didn't know how to treat each other. Give me Matthew chapter 18. Chapter 18, verse 15. Not nah, lie. Drop that. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. We, if, if we did what Christ say do, if we did what the Most High, you understand, established, if we did what Christ said do, then we wouldn't have this issue, this issue down here. We wouldn't have these problems amongst each other. We wouldn't know how to deal with situations the right way. The, the scriptures say our wisdom and understanding come from the law. Go ahead. 
The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 15. Who, who is this? Who is this? When you see it's red, written in red. So that means who's speaking? Christ. Did everybody just say that they Christians, to, to be a Christian is to follow Christ. So Memphis, Tennessee, you should follow what Christ said do if you're a Christian. Go ahead. Moreover, uh -huh. if thy brother shall trespass against thee. You know what a trespass is? It's, it's, it's going against something. Something just set up. Like, for instance, right? If me and you supposed to be cool, and you say, man, look, man, I don't like doing this, I don't like doing that, you know what I'm saying? And then I, I do the opposite of that. I done trespass against you. You understand? I done did something harmful to you. Go ahead. Go and tell him his fault. I'm, I'm supposed to go. You supposed to come to me. I'm supposed to go to you. Be like, hey, look, man, look. Hey, man, look. This is what happened, man. Like, like I, I, I ain't... I ain't mean to do it like that. Or, you know, I did it like that. Like, how you feel about it? We supposed to be men, so we supposed to be able to talk to each other. Like, hey, man, look, man, I did this, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, how you feel about it? Like, you cool with it? And then you supposed to say, well, nah, man, I wasn't cool with that. And then in turn, we supposed to work those things out. We ain't supposed to go shoot each other down the street because I didn't check you about you not having some goddamn J's on. Or I didn't check you because you couldn't get a girl at the club last night. Or you you can't put food on your table, so I come in your house, you got roaches everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Between thee and him alone. Me and you supposed to, do, to hash this out. Not everybody else. I ain't supposed to get on Instagram. I ain't supposed to get on Facebook. I ain't supposed to get on goddamn social media and tell the whole world that, oh, man, you hate my cousin, so now we finna come shoot the house up. Down here, a brother, a brother gonna shoot another brother house up, you understand, over a goddamn chain. A, a chain that ain't even real, more than likely. Go ahead. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. This is how Christ said gain your brother. This is how you're supposed to fix situations in the hood. The two brothers that grew up in Inglewood, them brothers supposed to last, they supposed to hash these things out that way. You understand? If it don't work between them two, what's supposed to happen? <clears throat> Go ahead. But if he would not hear thee, uh -huh. then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. You understand? Because sometimes brothers ain't really hearing each other. So you need mediators in between. Like, hey, look, man, hey, look, y'all need to chill that out, man. That ain't right. Like, man, don't kill little Wookie over there, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 cuz straight, he, he, he ain't even meaning like that. You know, he be flipping off every now and then. And then brother was like, you know what, you right. And then other brother was like, man, y'all should, should just, y'all should just make up, man. Let's go get some money. Like, that's what niggas be talking about. And Memphis getting money. Let's just go get some money, man. Like, we straight now. We ain't got to kill each other over there. We ain't got to fight over that. Go ahead. And if he <clears throat> shall neglect to hear them. So if he ain't hearing nobody, the brother like, man, I ain't going to hear all this shit, man. Forget that. Go ahead. Tell it unto the church. Tell them now the church ain't the Christian church in Memphis, Tennessee. You gonna tell them they're gonna call the police on you. You gonna tell them they're they gonna have you join the church and become a homosexual. You understand? That that church, that sanctuary that you got, if you follow what Christ is, that's in the UPK. Cause here you can go, you can have two men, you understand? That that you can have two men that don't agree and two other men come, you understand, and they, they try to work it out. And then they take it to the next level. Because sometimes it takes wiser men to fix situations. It take, and it always men that serve the Lord. Don't go get you some wisdom from some nigga that, that smoke crack on, on the corner. Or the dude that been, that been gang banging for the last 30 years and ain't moved off the block. What he going to be able to tell you? He ain't even experienced life. The only life he done experienced is on the corner. The, or your mama. Your mama, look, your mama don't know a goddamn thing. I'm to be real. Your mama, your grandma, they don't know nothing. Hell, they've been slaves for, for all these years. They don't know nothing. They just know how to be a good slave. So like I said, you understand? They don't know nothing about the Lord. <clears throat> and that's why your granddad ain't with them there. That's why your, your dad ain't with them. Because they weren't keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. You couldn't get no proper guidance from them. You couldn't get no understanding or wisdom from them. You understand? Go, go ahead, huh? But if he neglect to hear the church, uh -huh. let him be unto thee as an heathen man uh -huh. or 
I mean, Slacky, and a publican. All right, so, uh, Slacky, drop that. Go to verse, uh, chapter Luke, Slacky, the book of Luke, chapter 17, uh, verse 1. You understand? Like, you supposed to forgive your brother, man. Matter of fact, go to uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. You stay right there. You're supposed to forgive your brother. Like, ain't no alt or no trespass against each other that really can't be unforgiven. Because if so, then Christ, his, his death is just not in void. Christ died for millions and billions of Negroes, the Spanish and Native American Indians, we never seen. We never did anything to him. He died for them. So you telling me you can't forgive your brother? Over a goddamn chain in Memphis, Tennessee. You telling me our crime rate here in this city has has as a comparison of last year, of a whole entire year, our crime rate of today's time has a comparison to that. Two hundred eighty-eight people. You understand? Third in the nation. We got that because we can't do this simple thing right here. Go ahead, huh? The Book of Matthew, chapter eighteen, verse twenty-one. Uh huh. Then came Peter unto him uh -huh. and said, <clears throat> Lord, how oft thou shalt my brother sin against me? So Peter asking Christ, you understand, yeah, how was shy? He asked him, like, like how am I supposed to, like, how how should I forgive him? How much am I supposed to forgive him? Peter like, man, this brother did this, he did that. Like, damn, like, how much am I supposed to forgive him, Christ? Like, go ahead. And I forgive him uh -huh. till seven times. Uh-huh. So Peter like seven times? Go ahead. Yahweh shall say it unto him. Uh-huh. I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy side times seven. That's a lifespan, man. That's more than some brothers and sisters live. Like the like Christ like look, like look, man, look. Forgive this brother, man. Forgive him 70 times 7. Keep forgiving him. Yeah, every day you wake up, just be like, man, you know what? It's a lot here, brother. I love you. Your brothers are dying because they can't do this simple thing right here. But half of them don't even know. I can guarantee that. There's over 2,000 churches in Memphis, Tennessee. Ain't none of them teaching this. Hell, you can ask a Christian right now. The Salaki, you can ask a so-called Christian right now in Memphis what they learned at last uh, Sunday sermon. You know what they're going to say? I don't know. I know such and such, such and so was up there singing her tail out, though. She was up there cutting up. The pastor was joking. You know what I'm saying? Doing a gangster walk, the Memphis walk, all of that. He was doing all that in there. They remember that, but they will not remember any scriptures because there are no scriptures coming out in the Christian church. There is no brotherhood amongst Christians, you understand, today's time. No sisterhood at all. You're not going to learn these things in these churches in Memphis, Tennessee. The only place you're going to learn them is in the UPK. Only place you're gonna learn how to God damn it, they have disputes in the church. This is so like I gotta bring this out. I'm bring out this in one more scripture, you understand? When I was going to which I could never fit in. I don't know, just something about it. I couldn't fit in the Christian church. I I was like, man, something ain't right. I'd be sitting in there, you know what I'm saying, my ribs, she'd be over to sleep. The only reason she wanna come is cause she wanna sing in the choir. You know what I'm saying? My mom's in there, they'd be over there just kicking it. Ain't nobody got a Bible over. I got my Bible over and my, my pen and paper. I'm like, yeah, we finna get it. You gotta stand up for this. You gotta stand up for that. You gotta pay for this. You gotta pay for that. So I joined the uh, the, the youth ministry. And then I was a part of the, the so-called deacons, right? Where they had their meetings. These are supposed to be wise men. These are supposed to be men that serve the Lord. These men could not come to any agreements or anything. And I'm the young man there. I'm the youngest man there. And they're supposed to be showing me an example. And the whole entire time, they are arguing about a goddamn festival. They arguing about who get to speak first and this and that. The, the first time I learned the real order of the Bible is in this school right here. Where I learned that men take time to speak to each other and say, Salagia, oh, Salagia, hey, Salagia, if I may. Oh, Salagia, you was talking, go ahead. Which means, excuse me, in Hebrew. It's the only place I learned, like, manners, the manners in, in here. The Christian church has been established for a long time. They should know how to do these things by now, right? They should know how to raise men up to, to, to be considerate of each other, to show, to, to show brotherhood. They should know that by now, but they not. And they're teaching the youth the same thing. Ain't no, ain't no peace in the Christian church. 
Ain't no brotherhood. They arguing in the midst of the night. When everybody's gone, they arguing about a goddamn festival in front of young men who's supposed to who's supposed to build the church up after they leave. You cannot get wisdom from there. You can't get understanding from there. You understand? Go, go ahead, Doc. Verse 23. Oh, Salaga, drop that. <clears throat> Give me uh, Ephesians chapter 30. Oh, Salaga, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Sitting up in a Christian church, man, acting like they holy, man. They good, which holy means to be separate. And they're doing the same thing that everybody else doing in the world. Beating each other down. De the deaconess fighting, you understand? Or who going to give the pastor pineapple juice? Who going to give him something to eat tonight? Go ahead. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21. Uh-huh. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in your house shot. Uh-huh. Verse 32. That ye put out concerning the formal conversations of old to like you. Formal conversations the old man uh -huh. which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. When we come in this truth, we change our lives. We become better men. We learn how to how to treat each other. Because we men of the Lord. We men that serve Christ. We don't talk the same way. We don't walk the same way. You understand? In order to, to be a true brother and, and to show brotherhood and sisterhood is to, is to change completely who you are because you didn't learn it from the Lord. You learned it from this kingdom, this society, the United States. You learned it from your mother and your grandfather who learned it from them, which is the so-called white man, which is the devil. And the reason he's the devil, the reason he gets the big title of being the devil is because he deceived the whole world into believing that their Bible ain't real. Into believing that Christ is a white man in the Bible, Christ is a black man. Into believing that paints itself as being the, the chosen people of God. And takes a whole land and, and considers it to be holy when he defiles the whole land. You understand? It's a reason why these things are important in this Bible. It's a reason why you are, you're supposed to Learn the truth and do the truth. It's a difference. Everybody can learn the truth. Not everybody can do the truth. Not everybody can change, you understand, and live the life of the Lord and be glorious and, and be strong and mighty like the Most High called him to be. You understand? With that, I pass the class over to Trooper Kamayala for the security announcement. Trooper Kamayala, Trooper Kamayala, Trooper we are the ISUPK, start out at 1 West 125th Street, Harbor, New York. Rule for new brother and sister. When a new brother or sister come into the school, they are off limits for six months. They are to be saluted only. They are here to shed themselves of the world. If they need transportation, the teacher will arrange it. After six months, if a brother or sister have interest in a particular person, he or she must get permission from the head to speak to a brother or sister. There is another six months in which the brother and sister will court each other. After this six months period, brother and sister will get permission from the head to marry. Tithes, which is a commandment. The book of Numbers chapter 18 verse 21. The book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 through 10. Means 10. In Hebrew, ma'asherah, 10% of every penny and any increase the Lord gives you, give to the treasury department or teacher. Priest fund, free will offering for priests, not mandatory, whatever so amount you would like. Upcoming holy convocations. Feast of first fruit, start after the Sabbath, unleavened bread, Sundown, Sunday, April 28, 2019. Count 50 days. Only celebrate the 50th day, Monday, June 17, 2019. Start before sundown. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 10 through 22. If anyone wants to be a trooper in the school, start wearing all black. Boots, shirt, pants, headband, 
Scar. Amaja. Amaja Shabbat. Amaja. Barak. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shabbat, Yahweh Shabbat, Yahweh Shabbat, Yahweh Shabbat. Give a courtesy salute to the sisters. Yasmin Ta. Amaja. Amaja Shabbat. Amaja. Barak. Yahweh Shabbat, Yahweh Shabbat, Yahweh Shabbat. Yahweh Shabbat, Yahweh Shabbat, Yahweh Shabbat. Yasmin Ta. Dismissed.